So welcome to Community Meditation. My name is Jonna Genova, and I'm a meditation teacher in Southern California. And for the past couple of years now, I've been offering this live streamed meditation. And the purpose of doing the live stream is that it allows us to meet in real time together. And I know that in most communities, there are not meditation teachers offering um, weekly classes or weekly sanghas. So my hope is that this live stream can reach those of you who are in those pockets that don't have access to a teacher in real time. And for those of you who live in busy cities like myself in Southern California, where traffic becomes a real obstacle to meeting with a group to meditate, these uh, meditation downloads and recordings are so popular right now, but they're really missing something. You're missing the connection with the teacher that can only happen when you're meeting in real time. And you're also missing out on the connection with the other meditators who are joining you. And there's a very powerful learning that happens when we meet as a Sangha as we do here on Wednesday nights from 6 until 6.30 p.m. Pacific. So if you're watching this on the YouTube channel as a recording, this is a live stream, um, which explains why the um, production isn't all that fancy. But there's an energetic exchange that is more important than that kind of production. And you can join us by subscribing to our YouTube channel or by going to my website, samadhiforpeace.com. It's so easy to join. You just click the play button. We don't ask for a login or any kind of information. And I can't see you, but you can see me. So you can show up um, as you are in your pajamas. Um, you can rush in late, it's totally fine. Everyone is welcome. This week, I would like to take another stab at answering a question from um, one of our meditators. His name is Daniel. And um, some of you who were with us last week saw that my dog Johnny is really struggling these days. Um, he is doing okay today. He's not with us right now. He's resting. And I thank you all for your prayers and for your compassion and for your patience. Um, because he was so uncomfortable last week, even I was distracted by um, my desire to care for him. And I feel as though um, the answer that I provided for Daniel really wasn't um, as, as deep as it could have been. So here's my other shot at it. And I'll read um, Daniel's question for you now. This came to me in an email. Um, he shares that he's been doing some of the guided meditations online. And while he was listening to one of them, he says, something that really caught my attention was when you said that we usually treat ourselves, treat others better than we treat ourselves. He says, I'm at a stage in my journey where I have realized this has been true for me until just a few months ago. And I was this way my whole life. It was to the point where I felt I had to do so I could feel worthy. My worthiness and happiness was in everyone else's hands besides my own. So not only did I treat others better than I treated myself, but also didn't feel worth or happy unless I had everyone else's approval. And he asks, is there anything else you know about this topic that you can share with me? This question really hit me because I feel that it touches on the essence of these practices. You've heard me say before that these meditations go beyond self-help. This isn't really a knock on the other meditations that are out there. It's more a recognition that these practices are, are special. They're especially meaningful because they do more than provide some stress reduction or an escape. They're actually a map for us, a map that guides us to um, something deep inside, something our inner knowing knows, but the obscurations of our mind have covered up 
So it's like we're temporarily blind to something. And all, each and every one of us has a sense that there's more than what we can see. Before we get into kind of the my thoughts on Daniel's question, I'd like for us to generate our bodhicitta motivation. If you are new to community meditation, this means that we're just going to connect with that inner knowing within us. Even if this is your first time trying these meditations or these ideas seem really big, connect with that part of you that wanted to be here tonight. There's a part of you that knows something that's guiding you to be here. And that part of you knows that what we're doing here this evening benefits not only us, but has the capacity to benefit all beings. And really that's why we're here. We do the, the inner work first and we see that this has an effect on our um, seemingly outer world. So kind of with that in mind, if you'd like, you can close your eyes, rest palms on your knees, chin is slightly tilted towards your chest, sitting with back comfortably straight, balanced, relaxed, connecting with this part of you that guided you here this evening. Perhaps connecting with the intention, the wish for what we do here this evening to benefit all beings And allowing this motivation to inspire you this evening, to support you in staying engaged in the practices. If you become tired or impatient, simply reconnect with this motivation. and feel all of the other meditators who have joined us tonight. Okay. So in order to have this conversation about self-worth, being dependent upon other people's opinions. Let's look first at the self and self-compassion, self-care. And right away I can feel some of you saying, oh, well, you know, taking care of others is easy. It's taking care of myself that's difficult, finding the time, finding that self-love that allows me to take care of myself. And while it may seem as though it's easier to take care of others, I suggest that the way in which we have been caring for others is one that is not sustainable. It's one that comes from an effort, like a trying to be nice, a trying to be helpful. And if that's where we're coming from, then we experience what's known as compassion fatigue and empathic distress. Because there's kind of an effort, like we have to remind ourselves to do it. These practices awaken us to a kind of compassion, which includes self and others. And it happens almost simultaneously, but we begin with receiving compassion for self. This is something we have to learn how to do. No one has taught us how to do this yet, which is why these practices are so powerful because they're teaching us this self-compassion. There are loads of other teachers out there right now saying, oh, 
take care of yourself, do three things a day that involve self-care, and suddenly your life will change, right? And those of you who have tried this know that, yeah, for the couple of weeks that we can stick with it, we might feel better. But in time, life becomes so busy that we can't make that effort of self-care anymore. And then what was at the top of our priority list falls to the side again. And we fall back into that kind of exhaustion and fatigue where we are neglecting ourselves and becoming frustrated with our loved ones who we've been trying to help. So attempting to achieve this self-compassion in a direct way simply by telling yourself to do it doesn't work. What does work is if we rely upon our experience, our experience with what we call benefactors. These benefactors are really gifts to us. These are special people who have seen into our limitless potential. They have seen beyond any kind of label or judgment, any kind of reductive thinking about you. They're seeing into you. And they, they're able to do this in a special moment where you feel something. You catch on, something is happening. You can recall that moment of deep care. It's the power to commune with you and the goodness of your very being while wishing you deeply well. It's how we define love in these practices. So these moments of love snap you out of your habitual patterns of thought. And just for a second, awaken you to what's really there. The truth is that there's more there than your reductive thoughts about yourself or about your circumstances. And that something about this special person and the way in which they were present to you snaps you out of your way of being. And just for a second, you have a sense that there's more going on. When we recall these special moments, these moments that are so important and we practice receiving this moment because when it actually happened, we probably resisted it because that's what we're used to. We rely on those habitual patterns of thought. What do I mean by habitual patterns of thought? The reductive labels that we have for ourselves, right? The beliefs that we have about our circumstances. I'm just this she's just that, he's just that, this is just whatever. In this special moment, just for a second, this person, or it could also be nature or an animal, holds the space for us to connect with the knowing that there's more going on. We practice receiving this moment so that as these moments occur again and again in our lives, that little window that was open just to touch begins to open more and more and more. And instead of believing our reductive labels for ourselves, we then eventually, very naturally, we catch on to the fact that there's more going on. There's something holding every aspect of this experience that is far greater than the pieces that we notice. Once this becomes stabilized for us, right? So we have the benefactor moments that we recall in our meditation. It's kind of unstable. We can sort of hold on to it and feel it, feel the radiance of this wish of love during the meditation for 20 minutes or so. Maybe we get really good at it and we can do it for an hour, right? And maybe as we progress through the meditations, we notice more and more benefactor moments from our past and present day. And it begins to appear to us that, wow, there are so many benefactors in my life. I never noticed this before. This is a part of the evolution. Then in time, it becomes more comfortable for us to be in these benefactor moments. It becomes more comfortable for us to accept that there's more going on. What's this more that's going on? 
Well, those of you who were raised Catholic like I was, you might understand it as everyone and everything is God or your divinity, your brilliance. Some people like to think of it as um, can be described. I think this is the title of one of the Dalai Lama's books, The Universe in a Single Atom. You are limitless. When this knowing stabilizes, then we begin to believe this for ourselves. And what occurs for us day to day, those little things that used to knock us down, now appear smaller and smaller, like a smaller and smaller piece of this picture of what's happening. And instead of resting in those tiny labels, instead we rest in that something bigger. So those little things don't affect us quite as, mu as much. So those little things, right, if we're talking about self-care, one thing I know so many people struggle with is self-image. And um, a good friend of mine, her name is Robin, she has this blog that she started called Charlotte's Book, and it's all about um, beauty. And she has a number of beauty experts. And today her article was about Botox and shaming people for um, doing Botox. And part of her argument was, can we get past the shame and just allow people to do what they choose to do, right? Well, the label for ourselves, the, or the one who might be um, wanting to change their appearance is that I'm old. Old is not pretty, young is pretty, these wrinkles are not attractive, right? Those are labels, I am my wrinkles, I am my old age, instead of a knowing that I am so much more than these wrinkles. I am the experience behind these wrinkles, right? If we wanna look at um, our, our physical body and our weight, if you're unhappy with your weight, whether you feel that you're too big or too small, you begin to realize that you are more than just the size of your physical form. We are more than our job. We are more than our achievements and accomplishments. When this recognition stabilizes, then we believe it for ourselves and then we automatically see it in others. This is what our spiritual benefactors have achieved. It's a stabilization in this recognition. People like Dr. King, who saw beyond gender, saw beyond color, saw beyond socioeconomic status, saw beyond um, education, saw into the humanness of all beings, the deep dignity of all beings, an unconditional worth in all beings. When we have this recognition for self that there's more going on, we automatically see that this is not true not only for ourselves, but for everyone around us and everything around us. Then the reductive labels are carry less weight, they're less important. So how does this tie into Daniel's question about self-care and self-worth, right? This means that the way to achieving a kind of sustainable self-worth is to return to a knowing of your unconditional worth. And how do we do this? We do this through these practices communing with our benefactors, allowing them to hold the door open for us to see something. We practice that over and over and over. And then there's kind of a, like a spontaneous, organic, sustainable recognition of the unconditional worth of others. And then our way of caring for them is it's tireless, right? because we're not trying to fix them. Instead, we're communing with their unconditional worth. We're seeing beyond their suffering to what exists that's uh, beneath that, that's holding that. We're resting in that space with them. We're holding the door open for them to see that there's more going on. It's kind of a, a road that we, um, as Westerners, it's totally unexpected, right? Because it seems really windy. 
but um, I can tell you it works <laughs> and it is truly sustainable. And there's a kind of joy in life that arises when we, when we reach a level of stability. It doesn't happen from doing the meditation once. It might feel good doing the meditation once, but it takes time to relax into trusting that there's more there than the labels because so far our reality is being held by these labels. And so to abandon the labels is, is quite scary, which is the, the part of the profundity in these practices that the love from our benefactors, love becomes a vehicle, a trustworthy vehicle to this understanding. That's a lot of talking already. We have just a few minutes um, to try the meditation. So sitting in a relaxed way, back comfortably straight, grounding through your seat as you lift through the crown, chin is slightly tilted towards your chest, eyes are soft, gazes downward. Begin to feel the rise and fall of your body with each breath. And recall a moment with a benefactor, perhaps a stranger, a coworker, a family member, or a pet. See if you can recall a moment today when you felt that someone saw into you saw something more in you. Just a simple moment, perhaps of quiet care. Look into this person's eyes. Recalling this moment as if it were happening right now. Receiving opening to this loving energy. Receiving the happiness of this moment as if it were a gentle shower of healing radiance softly pouring over you. Penetrating your skin your organs and bones. Into every drop of blood, every cell, all the way down to your fingertips and toes.
every part of you loved in its very being. All physical tensions softening under the touch of this gentle healing energy. Now receiving this radiance into all parts of your mind. Any thoughts or feelings of worry, anger, inadequacy, confusion or joy. This, radi this radiance penetrating all feelings, all thoughts in the same way. Whatever arises is simply absorbed into the loving luminosity that surrounds you. Every part of you loved in its very being. Just continue to open to this healing radiance until it feels as though you could just merge into oneness with this kindness of energy. Dropping all frames of reference allowing the mind to fall totally open. To be unconfined. Unrestricted. Wide open. Letting all be.
Good work. Before we go this evening, let's dedicate the merit that we've generated. So if you'd like placing your hands in prayer at your heart, maybe placing one hand over your heart or simply palms on your knees. We've generated merit with our efforts this evening. And now we can practice generosity by dedicating the merit that we've generated to the well-being of all beings instead of holding it on for to ourselves. So with the sound of the bell, let's practice sincerest generosity and feel this merit just penetrating all beings. Thank you so much for being here with me tonight for community meditation. I hope to see you again next week, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific for the live stream. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, info at samadhiforpeace.com. Good night.